one more question about hay, actually, while we were kind of on the topic. I'm curious, what when you set out to disrupt email almost, some a lot of people think, oh, Gmail, and that's as good as it's going to get. So <laughs> what were some of the maybe perceptions or assumptions that you had that have been harder to move the needle on than, than you thought? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I think, first of all, just the task itself seemed almost impossible when we took it on. Like Gmail has been the dominant force in email basically since it was launched and they know it. And that is the reason why it's both this exhilarating challenge, but also this almost insurmountable one at the same time, because Gmail has sat fatly on email as the default option for almost everyone since 2004. And the client shows it. They have not had any serious competition when it comes to sort of whole platforms. There's been all sorts of interesting apps that have tried different things, but they've all built on top of Gmail. They've never tried to challenge the email service dominant power that they have. And here we come along with this crazy idea that private individuals should pay for email. Like, first of all, head exploding, right? What do you mean pay for email? I've been getting email for free for 15 years. Well, quote unquote free, right? Like you've been paying all along. You just haven't been paying in cash money. You've been paying with your attention. You've been paying with your data. You've been paying with your dignity and your receipts and everything else that Google is rummaging through, right? So I think, uh, first of all, that has changed on its own. I mean, if we tried to launch Hay in 2010, like, it would just have been crickets because everyone at that time just thought like, oh, Google is this uh, benevolent, uh, wonderful company that just gives away email for free. Aren't they just nice? They're doing it for the best of our interest. And none of the awareness and sort of skepticism that we've seen develop over the past decade was there. But now, when we launched in 2020, there actually was a market. There actually was a large group of people who had thought about these issues, who had thought, you know what? I don't like it. I don't like the way I'm paying for Gmail. I don't like paying with my attention, my dignity, and my uh, private data. I would like to just pay with money, right? And that was who we sort of appealed to. It's still an uphill battle. And when you look at the fact that Gmail has over a billion users, I mean, we're never, ever going to get that. And it's not what we're trying to do either, right? Like we're trying to offer a premium but niche product for the kind of person who uses email enough that $100 a year is not sort of totally out left field, right? Like they can imagine spending money on something they spend a lot of time on. And that was the whole reason we built Hey in the first place. There's basically two products or or two activities where I spent my entire day in terms of communication. It's Basecamp. We'd already built that and we already use that like all the time. And then the other one was email. And I was using Gmail and I was spending hours a day because I write a lot of emails. I receive a lot of emails. It's the main way I communicate with the outside world. And Basecamp is the main way I communicate with the inside world at our company. So I I knew quite quickly after we started developing Hey that we had something here. Because after having worked on this for a few months, I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going back to Gmail. There's just no way. I cannot go back. Um, And a lot of it came from managing that flow. One of the things that always really just annoyed me with Gmail and most other traditional clients was the concept that anyone who got a hold of my email address, and that wasn't exactly hard. I plastered it all over my damn homepage and, and in a bunch of other places. They could get access immediately to my brain on their account, on their timetable, they send me an email. And if you use a, a standard email client like Mail App on, on, the, on the iPhone, like it'll literally buzz your pocket. Like someone in the world could buzz my pocket whenever they wanted just because they had something to say. And maybe that was something I was interested in. That happened some of the time. But a lot of the times it was not. A lot of times I was not interested in hearing with, about what they had to sell or what they were following up or whether I wanted to buy a list of customers from some competitor right. or some other bullshit yep. that I get an <laughs> absolute infinite amount of, of email about. So I, I felt like, do you know what? I was not in control of my inbox. I mean, literally, my inbox was being filled up. And my inbox, as for a lot of people, it's, it's kind of like my, my 
part of at least my to-do list for the day, for the week, for the month. Like, this is what I'm working on. This is what's important. And I just have all these people just putting stuff in there. I didn't say yes to that. Um, so one of those features that just really made a huge difference for me and my tranquility, my calmness and my sanity, for to, to be frank, was the screener. This simple idea that no one gets to reach my inbox in Hay when they write me for the first time until I give them permission. And it's it's one of those insights where you think like, well, I don't know, that sounds kind of obvious or, or whatever. And then you use it and you go like, oh, there's a before and then there's an after. <laughs> yeah, I think, how um, did I we, live we, without this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just one of those yeah. ideas we kind of got inspired by um, one of the, the big changes in online dating, which was Tinder's idea of the swipe, that you had to have a two-way connection where like this person says, yeah, I want to hear from this other person. And the other person also says, I want to hear from them. And now you have sort of two-way consent. Before that, online dating was not like that. I, I did online dating before Tinder and it was a very different thing. And particularly women had a very different experience when they were just hearing from a bunch of people they were not interested in hearing from. Um, so I felt it was a little bit like that of what we kind of discovered with Hey and the screener that like all of a sudden now my inbox is full of people I want to hear from. Like that in itself, it's just like, oh yeah, actually, why idea. wasn't it always like that? Why yeah. was my inbox full of people I did not want to hear from? Yeah.